Hey folks, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about Armory Forger and how to get started in the game. You can come in here and select what type of game mode you want to play multiplayer on. So there are official uh, servers that basically run the vanilla version of the game with no modifications. Your uh, indicators here are kind of where these servers are located. So this one's located in the United States, in uh, New York State. So you select what you want to play. And that one's full, this one isn't. So you hit the play button like that, brings you into the launch of that server. So once we're in the server, uh, your deployment setup page, um, it tells you the available factions. Right now we can't play FIA, but we can play Soviet and US. And it tells you how many players are, are on uh, each team. Hit continue and it brings you in again to the second deployment setup page where we will select which faction or which uh, nation state we want to play for. So we'll go that route uh, for this video. We'll select the United States Army. And once you select that, you cannot change it for the course of uh, the server run. Um, once the game has been won by one faction or the other, then you can change which nation state you play for at that point. But up until that point, you cannot change it and it's persistent until that server resets. Now we select uh, basically squads. So this is a squad that already exists and it is not locked so I can join it. And each squad has uh, six slots. You're not going to select what kind of uh, loadout you have here. So that doesn't matter. You can join any unlocked squad. You can create a new squad. When you create the new squad, if you hit P, group menu, you can modify what your squad is called. And we typically, the guys that I play with, run, uh, we call ourselves Phoenix. So you can make it private so people can't join it, which sometimes <laughs> is important uh, if you're going to use uh, radios and stuff, which we'll get into later. You can lock that down, which we'll do for this video so I don't have people jumping in while I'm trying to go through it. So that's done and we can hit escape, go out of that menu. Now Phoenix squad is created and we can continue on from here. Now the guy that's already on my team or guys have built, which we'll get into a radio antenna, an ammo supply point and a small vehicle, light vehicle maintenance point. So that's the only place we can spawn right now. How this game works is you have to capture these cat points. There's minor ones like Idaho, Delaware, Kentucky, and then there's major ones like Georgia. To win the game, we must take and hold five of these major cat points, which are indicated with the purple letter. Another thing to note is the names on the map. So in this game, if you get killed and you're an American, you have an American radio on you, the Soviets can take your American radio and listen to it. So if I indicate over the radio our plans or our movements and I use the actual names on top, Villeneuve, Tiller's Fine, Gravette, Military Hospital, Montanac, the Soviets will know exactly where we're going. So that's why there are code names for these. Vermont. And in this game, in this particular setup, the code names are state names. And we use those state names. If I'm talking to other people in game on my team, I will say I'm going to Idaho. These uh, code names change every time the server resets. It's part of the reason why you can't change uh, nation states until the server resets is you don't want the enemy to find out what, what each of these are, what, what each code name is for each spot. So for movements and tactics and strategy, we use the code names. And that's important. And guys will give you a hard time uh, on your team if you start saying the actual names of these places over the radio because you're letting the Soviets know or vice versa, depending on which team you're on, what our movements are. And you have to be careful about giving information away that will let the Soviets know what the code names are for each place as well. Just things to consider. Thank you. 
that's going on. So we're going to spawn here at the main operating base. We're going to get geared up. We'll go into that. And then we're going to start moving strategically uh, and taking objectives. Now, we're starting out on the west coast over here, which means the typically the, the game is set up to put uh, opposing factions on opposite sides of the map or, or somewhere in that kind of setup. And that way you can kind of push towards each, uh, each other and halfway through the game, you create a front line essentially. So if we're here, chances are the Soviets are either down in this area or they're over in this area and we're going to both push towards each other. So strategically, I want to move forward towards Soviet aggression as fast as I can. Now, a lot of guys will look at this. Let's say we started down here up in the hills at Black Lake. A lot of guys will start taking these points to the south, which does us no good because we want to go as far north into contact as we can to prevent the Soviets from coming down towards us. The further up we can go rapidly, the better off the rest of the game is going to be for us because we can take these and we can build some things that help us defend it without anyone being there. So if we instead, if we spawned, let's say, if we started here somewhere, if we started going this way and the Soviets started here and started coming north, well, we'd have all of these points to the north of where we are, but the Soviets will push really hard to get to Entredu here and, and Montanac or Montana. And then they have access because they've created this defensive front line here. They cut us off from getting to Georgia, Arkansas, Colorado, Maryland, and potentially Missouri if we go the wrong way. So it's very important. I get very frustrated in games and guys have been on games with me that are probably watching this where I'm going to constantly be like, why are you guys going north? Once we establish a defensive line, then we can send one team north of two guys and, and take uh, this point, maybe this point, and you need communications to connect the two to be able to take them. And then we can take that final point. Once we've established a defensive line as far south as we can go, we don't need to get Hawaii right away if we're starting here. We need to get south. We need to create a line and cut off the Soviets from taking Georgia, Missouri. Then we have one, two, three, four. If we create this line and put up barracks, we can prevent the Soviets from, from getting at these. And then we can take them after. We need to establish a defensive line as far forward as possible first. So that's a vital strategic thing that we need to do when we're playing this game, if you want to win. I mean, there are a lot of guys, and, and rightly so, that kind of want to manipulate the game between the two sides so that both sides have an equal amount and they're just duking it out somewhere in the middle here at some of these strategic points and just it's a back and forth and, and there are guys that would never like to see the game won, which is fine and that's it is a fun game when you do that. You'll have other teams that'll go behind enemy lines and do things, which we'll, <laughs> we'll get into some of that stuff later. So to start with, we have to, because we have no other points taken. These are uh, uh, currently when they're green and they have this uh, white shield in front of them. They're points that are owned by the FIA that we can take. Um, so we the only place we can spawn right now is our main operating base, which is this is the start of this server's setup. So this is if you come into a server and it's just starting, this is what you're going to see. So we cannot select any loadouts from here. We just hit the uh, deploy and go in. We've spawned at our American main operating base and you can see some things have already been built here when we start the only thing that's going to be on the map is the command post so this is the command post and inside you see this cork board that's where we're going to build stuff from this is our supply station for this mobile command post this is a crucial part of the game is logistics and supplies as it is in real life and you can take supplies in various vehicles so at the start of a server startup, typically the American camp is equipped with two 50 caliber mounted Humvees and one supply truck. Depending on how the server's set up, these Humvees can take between 180 and 200 units of supplies and our supply truck can take between 500 and 600 units of supplies. So 
in order to build things like this heavy vehicle depot and this uh, ammo supply point and our comms relay or our, our uh, communications uh, radio antenna, we need supplies. And each one, as we'll see in here, will go in the command post to the core cord. It's a friendly shooting at me. Um, we hit F to start building, and that brings up our build menu. And you saw how many supplies it showed. So right now we have 2,105 units of supplies between this supply point, supplies here in our heavy vehicle depot, and uh, the ammo supply point will hold supplies as well. So with nothing built at the start, we only have a storage capacity of 500. And as we build these different things, uh, they will hold supplies and, and uh, up our storage capacity. So right now with what we have built, we can hold 6,700 units of supplies, which allows us to rapidly build once we fill that storage capacity because we're not gonna run out of supplies. So this guy has either been on the server for a while to accumulate 2,100 or he's gone back and forth with the second Humvee that was here and grabbed supplies. So let's talk about where do these supplies come from? So on major cat points like Georgia, there are supplies within what's called the wire, the defensive wall of the facility. And there's a typically in the open there in C cans with a sign in front of them. All supply points will have uh, a sign in front of it. This one being part of the command post has a blue sign, but they're typically like a wooden sign and they say like supplies. So we can get those supplies uh, you got to look around sometimes these major cap points there's supply points right in the cap uh, a lot of the secondary cap points like Lemul, uh there's a barn right here and it's kind of sneaky there's just a sign inside the barn and a few crates and that is an actual supply point giving you enough supplies to start building a couple of things the other supply points are these you'll see these three uh, rectangles stacked on top of each other those are supply points with a lot of supplies in them. So there's one here at the sawmill. There's one, there's another sawmill down here near Levy. Uh, there's another sawmill up north right here. Uh, it's an industrial compound with lots of supplies in it. There's another sawmill here at Gory. A few intermodal containers there, sea cans, Connex boxes, whatever you want to call them. And there's another big farm up here with a bunch of supplies. And down south, there's a supply point near uh, Duras. It's a... Uh, basically like a cottage up here with a bunch of supplies around it. And one over here by Ohio, which I'm, oh right, that's another, uh, it's a military compound if memory serves me with the tower there. So those are your like main uh, secondary supply points, okay? So you can take that supply truck, go down the road, grab supplies here, and they're typically at the start of the uh, server startup. They're heavily defended between three and, and six FIA, uh, like third party, the AI uh, guys defending these things. So you gotta kind of clear it out and then you can grab supplies, bring them back to whatever you're trying to build up. With regards to what should you build, um, Again, I talked about this game being won by taking cap points. You can see with a tower built here at Michigan, our main operating base, we have access because that radio signal will reach typically two cap points away. We can go all the way to Vermont here. The risk with going to Vermont and skipping Idaho is that if we didn't create a chain of radio connection to each one, the Soviets could come in behind us and all they have to do is take these two points and it cuts us off from everything that we've already taken if they, if they break this chain of communication. So it is a very wise strategic and tactical move. I guess it's more strategic for us to create a basically a spider web of communication. So we'll take Villeneuve, we'll put a tower there, we'll take Vermont, we'll take Delaware and put towers at all of these. That way it's harder for the other team to cut our communications. We set up uh, a base here at Wisconsin and then we can set this radio tower up and it's going to extend our communication to 
if memory serves me, all the way up to Virginia. Like it makes a large diameter umbrella of communications coverage. But the problem is now the Soviets, if I only took, let's say Vermont, and then I took this, all the Soviets would have to do is come in behind me, take Vermont, and it cuts me off from this radio tower and anything else I've taken. So you need to create that spider web. You need to get a couple of teams when you start the game to one team would go up this road, take these points, and create connections with radio antennas as they went. And the only way to do that, when you start here, you get geared up, load up one of the vehicles, because we've now got 2,700 units of supplies here. I can load that Humvee up with 200 of them, go take Idaho, and a comms relay, relay tower, which we need, is only 275 supplies. When we take these points, there's already a certain number of supplies here, anywhere between 75 and 225 supplies already there in the command tent ready to be used. And we only have to supplement it with, you know, depending on again, how many are there, the 200 we've taken with our uh, Humvee, or if I want to take one of those trucks, they're slower, but I can take up to five or 600 units of supplies with that supply truck. If I left here with a full supply truck, I can augment what's already at Idaho after I take it, build this relay and continue on somebody doesn't have to come behind me with a truck as a logistics support vehicle if we assault with all the supplies we need we can much more effectively efficiently and rapidly move forward creating that comms uh spider web What I typically do is I will get a, a backpack radio. I'll, I'll, I'll make a pack up with all, all my ammo and, and medical supplies, put it on the truck and then grab a radio. I'll take that truck, I'll go to Idaho, I'll deploy my radio, I'll grab my supply pack, I'll take Idaho, transfer what supplies I need, build the radio relay, then I'll move on. I'll grab my radio here, put it back on my back, put my back, my, uh, my supply pack in the truck, put the radio on my back, take that supply truck with what supplies are left, typically probably 550, because I only needed 50 here. And I'll move to Vermont and I'll set up somewhere around Vermont with my radio so I can respawn if I get killed. Grab my supply pack, go in, assault Vermont, kill all the AI. I'll go grab my truck, bring the truck there, leaving my deployed radio in case another, you know, a Soviet player comes in and kills me. I can quickly respawn here. Once I've taken Vermont, I will transfer the required supplies from the 550 I have left in my supply truck. I will build that radio relay. As I feel I'm getting closer to the Soviet front line, I will start to consider building either living quarters uh, or a large living quarters, which if there's enough supplies at the cap point to spawn AI players, up to four will spawn out of the living quarter. So you see here, it spawns AI defenders and reduces the cost of uh, player respawns. And it'll hold some supplies as well. As I get closer to where the Soviets are, I will start thinking about creating living quarters. And depending on the size of the cap point, each cap point can support so many of these buildings. So we'll typically, if let's say the Soviets own Gravet and we have Vermont, I will build a comms relay at, at Vermont so that I am connected to the rest of my grid. And that actually also will slowly feed supplies in automatically. The stronger my net is and the more cap points we own, the more supplies we will get every five seconds, 10 seconds, automatically supplying these points. So the stronger our offense at the start of the game, the more supplies we're going to have at our front line once we establish it. So I will build a relay station here and then I'll build up to, depending on how strong I feel the Soviet presence is nearby, I can build two, three, four of these living quarters at this cap point. As long as there's enough supplies, it will keep spawning uh, each one of these will have four living uh, AI spawned out of it and stay within the circumference of the cap point here to defend it. So once I've done that, then it is being defended. I can go uh, on the offensive and start attacking Gravette. So that's uh, another thing that's really important to kind of consider and, and think about doing. That spawns AI. Fuel points will refuel vehicles, which isn't super critical at this juncture in the game. We're still in beta. But what it does is if you put this hide it somewhere in the woods, 
woods or something. It makes capping this point a lot harder time-wise. It slows the cap conversion of the point if you go to take it. And all you need to do to counter that is just to go deconstruct this with the, uh, the building tool, the shovel. The light vehicle maintenance point allows us to spawn vehicles, smaller ones, your, your Jeeps and your Humvees and that sort of thing which is critical if I want to spawn near the front line and move quickly, I can spawn here, build a small reconnaissance vehicle, Jeep, Humvee, etc., cetera, and, and move out as long as I have enough supplies uh, to build the, uh, the unit that I want to build. Ammunition supply points are, we usually typically put them at major cap points and it allows us to change our loadout, resupply our, our kit. Comms relay station is our communications. You see these red lines. Um, once they're established, they make connections, as I've said before. Other things we can build is a field hospital. Field hospital uh, will allow you to heal yourself and replenish first aid supplies, and it'll hold a lot of supplies. For me, I, I never build these. Uh, and another thing to note, if you're building large living quarters or small living quarters, as they spawn AI, it lags the server. Um, there is a cleanup script on most of these servers now, whereby once these AI are killed, within a certain amount of time the server will uh, clean up the dead bodies but if it's a server where that doesn't happen the more of these you build the more and more lag the server is going to have so that's something to be careful of mindful of we typically don't build these except for in the major cat points that we really need to defend and and hold to win the game so we'll build them here we won't necessarily build them at our secondary cat points unless it's right on the front line and that's just something that's going to slow the advance of the Soviets. It's going to make it harder for them to take this cap point. And the counter to that is you go in with a two-man team or more, and one guy covers while the second guy dismantles each living quarters. And it's hard to do when there's a lot of living quarters, and if they're set up in such a way that it, they can provide overlapping cover, um, it makes it really difficult and typically extremely fun, especially if you throw real players in the mix uh, at that cap point trying to defend. Um, live, the large living quarters just spawns more guys um, and helps with defensive stuff. Heavy vehicle maintenance point is how we spawn our, our big trucks, supply trucks, fuel trucks, repair trucks, mobile command trucks, that sort of thing. Helipad, you need to have a sergeant level rank, which you rank up by killing AI, killing pl uh, real world players, taking cap points, advancing the team's uh, objectives, essentially. You, you will get uh, rank points and rank up. You need to be a sergeant to build it, and uh, I believe you need to be a sergeant to build the helicopter after the pad. Is Floodlights do actually come in handy for night defense, just lighting up areas where guys would normally come in to uh, attack cat points, so you can light up areas and things like that. And then we have defensive buildings and then just regular defensive things. So you can build a bunker, defensive position, it's just stuff to get behind within the base or the cap point to help fend it. Then you have these machine gun nests. So if I build a couple of machine gun nests strategically situated, and then I build a uh, uh, living quarters, the AI will actually man these machine gun nests. Roadblocks come in handy for preventing vehicles from gaining access to points, obviously. And there's different types of those. And there's checkpoints and things as well that we can put out on the roads. Dragon's teeth just keep armored vehicles out and definitely keeps light armored vehicles out. Razor wire is going to prevent players from accessing points. And again, the counter to that is you just have to deconstruct it with a shovel. And then sandbags are good uh, cover that you can build within your base. You can camouflage things with the tents. They're completely useless and a waste of time. That's kind of getting started and the basics of the game. Uh, in the next episode, we will actually go into setting up our kit um, and how I set up my kit and why and uh, kind of talk about some of the other guys that I play with, how they set their kit up and why. So thanks for watching this first episode and we'll go into the next. Thanks.